All right. Hey guys, Ryan with Home Lab Tech Support. I'm having a bit of trouble with a VoIP phone, uh, and so one of the diagnostics that you can use when troubleshooting uh, packet-based devices, and especially VoIP, uh, is called port mirroring. So you can use Wireshark and other packet capture um, you know, programs to, to take a look at the data streams. Um, you can also do a packet capture on, on most VoIP phones nowadays, and you can also do the packet capture right from your router uh, using TCP dump if uh, it's not available on a GUI interface. Anyways, I wanted to show you how to do the port mirror in Unify, uh, so let's go ahead and transition over. Uh, I'm not going to do any editing in this video, so excuse any weirdness. Okay, um, I already have Unify up. Um, port 12. Oh, sorry. Port 13 is the phone uh, that I have plugged into, and I have it plugged into my orange LAN, which is VLAN 100. I know it works because that's what my computer's on right now. And port 13 is going to be the port that I want to plug my computer into to listen to that traffic. I have a separate uh, Ethernet interface to do that. Um, so I'm going to edit the port that I want to be the port that we're going to listen to the traffic on. Let me say that differently, because now that I hear that, that's that's sounding a little bit confusing. I want to mirror the data coming in and out of port 13 so I can listen to what's happening here. So we will make changes to port 12 to be able to listen to port 13. So we're going to set port 12 as a mirroring port. So we'll go down to operation, we'll select mirroring, um, and then we'll mirror port 13 right so if we take a look at the little blurb here enabling mirroring will forward both inbound and outbound traffic on the mirroring port to port 12 and we are currently configuring port 12 so by typing in the mirroring port number which is port 13 which is the phone we are now making port 12 ig ignore the the description into basically a screaming port um, any traffic that my computer tries to send over port 12 won't be heard on the network because the switch won't accept traffic on this port. So if we take a look at my network, um, this is the Ethernet interface that I just plugged in. It's going to error out and we're going to get a PIPA, um, which is a, a video in its own, uh, Automatic Private Internet Protocol Addressing. It's that 169254 address that you always see. Uh, when your DHCP fails. Uh, anyways, the cable is connected, but your computer does not have any it yet. There's a PIVO. Okay, cool. So that's good. Um, and if I give myself a new uh, Wireshark window, uh, again, sorry, uh, I'm doing this really quick. Uh, go down, take a look at USB LAN. So now we're seeing all of the packets that are coming out of here. And if I get the MAC address on my phone, which I think I already have, uh, ether.source. Uh, okay, yeah, I was already playing with this. Um, and filter. So the phone is trying to ask for DHCP. That's the packets uh, that are coming from it. We can take a look at the source. source. Xamen or Yemen, yeah, link phone uh, ending in D2EF49, which is D2. Uh, there we go. Yeah, oh no, there's no chance you can read that. Uh, D2, oh, you can read that. D2EF49, uh, and those are the packets that we want to look at. So um, the, the reason that this works is because switches only. Um, well, they switch packets that are destined for their destination. Unlike a hub, which takes in a packet and screams it out at all ports, switches takes a look at a MAC address table, uh, or also referred to as a switching table inappropriately, um, and sends it down the correct destination and the correct ports that it needs to go to. So normally, my phone would not hear this traffic that we're seeing, um, which is why you need to do port mirroring, and so you can listen to all of the data that's happening over that port because simply turning on Wireshark connected into a switch, you won't hear the traffic that is being uh, sent from this phone unless it is broadcast traffic, um, which means that it does not have a direct destination and it's actually sending out on the broadcast address of your subnet. Anyways, uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, little uh, diagnostic tidbits. Um, and as I go through and have other things that I do uh, while I'm working, I'll, uh, I'll make these videos and, and upload them for you. Okay, um, 
you have a good evening. Oh, uh, right, please uh, like and subscribe. Um, comment, let me know uh, what you want to see. I'm working on a VLAN video, guys. I am. I just I want to go so in depth with it that it's kind of ridiculous because I want to make sure that you understand every single piece about VLANing because a lot of you have problems with it. And I want to clear up every single one of those questions in one video. And it's becoming a problem that I am getting frustrated um, that I, I, I'm not able to perfectly convey. And so I'm just taking my time to make that video correct. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep uploading these videos. Anyways, have a good night. Bye.